I cracked up because it's phenomenal. He's like, if you think about it, Caleb and his channel is like a cooking show where you talk about the knives, you talk about different types of fruit, you talk about <laughs> ovens, temperatures, but you never actually cook. Um, <laughs> What's up, everybody? Anthony Saratelli here of Jersey Filmmaker, and today I've got another iFilmmaker podcast interview for you, and this time it's with Mr. Caleb Pike of DSLR Video Shooter. Caleb is extremely knowledgeable and puts out some really great gear reviews and tutorials on his YouTube channel where he has about a quarter of a million subscribers, so I suggest go checking him out at DSLR Video Shooter, which I'll of course link in the description below. I've selected about 10 minutes to show on this episode today, but if you wanna hear the full hour and a half, you can go check that out on ifilmmakerpodcast.com or listen on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, etc. All those links will be below as well. But that's enough of an intro. Let's get right to it with Caleb Pike. I fully understand that kind of stuff. So. Are you both uh, Adobe guys? Yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah. yeah. So are, are you actually, the oddball? What? Are you the oddball here? You're you're on Final Cut? I'm uh yes, I'm the perfect uh Apple <laughs> child. Uh -huh. uh Apple hardware, Apple software. There so. you go. You guys yeah, on, on Apple hardware? Well, yep. I, oh, I'm on Apple hardware uh, uh, with the Mac Pro, but my monitors and everything else is not. So. Gotcha. But so I going, do love their operating system. Sorry, go ahead. Going into like when I got into all this stuff, I was into compositing and, and VFX mm -hmm. stuff. So like for me to be on in motion at the time, was just it was such a pain so i came over yeah, here as quickly yeah. as possible once i figured out the dynamic link so i've been stuck on it since uh, and yeah. now the whole workflow I, I just can't i don't like the i don't like it it doesn't visually please me the final cut thing but i'm just not used to it at the same sure. time sure so. yeah yeah i love how final cut is is super easy to learn um i learned on final cut pro 10 um oh it was you yeah, learned on 10 I think like, I learned like, on like seven. Learned, like learned no. editing on I 10? I learned editing on 10. How old are you? Wow. Who, me? Yeah, ten, how old's 10? We, 10 is like two years, three years. That's what I mean. Like, how could you have just, you just learned no. to edit two years ago? No, it, it's not. 10 is not two, three years. Yes, 10, it, it's 10, not 10 that. Long, I, like, I, I want to say like 2015. No. It's not 15. Dude, it's no. not that old, man. I'm telling you, I, I learned. If anybody, where, where's on my Apple, chat? Right? Where, where's my chat? Hold on. Uh, I don't People know. I've been writing coming. in a chat. I haven't even have it. Can somebody look up how long? 2011. <laughs> okay. There you wow. Go. Really? Come okay. On. Final Cut 10 came out in 2011. Crazy. Final Cut 10 uh, released June 21st, 2011 in the app yes. store. Wow. I'm not crazy. I was That's editing. I was. I was editing in Final Cut 10 from my dorm room at FIU. I remember. Wow. That's where I learned. That's scary. I swore that was like 2014. Same, dude. <laughs> I thought it was only a few years old. I mean, no, I, I learned. Crazy. Yeah. So I, I learned, I learned it on 10. Well, I started on iMovie, obviously. I think the way anybody with a Mac would start. Yep, right. um, but I quickly transitioned over to Final Cut 10. Um, and then when I, you know, I was there for a long time. I started my business in 2013. I started doing it for money because I started at my church as well. Um, and then, oh, cool. yeah, and and I was doing a lot of videos for my church, everything Final Cut Pro 10. I started my business 2013. My it was funny. My very first project that I ever accepted uh, for, <laughs> for for money, it was basically I had to not cover an event, but they need they had footage from an event that they covered. They they needed me to edit for mm. them. The files that they gave me. Final Cut Pro 10 would not accept it. So I had to call my friend Fernando, who had been on has been on the show before. Um, I called him, hey man, uh, these files that I'm supposed to edit, Final Cut does not accept them. Um, but a, a, apparently Premiere does. So I'm stuck here having to edit this on Premiere. And just like that, I had to learn the hard way. Uh so Ke yeah, Ke my, Ke yeah I just saw that Ke Kevin Otterness is so on here. Kevin Otterness has been on the show there. before. <laughs> Calling us all babies. Uh, <laughs> um, glad to have you on the on the on the chat, Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Uh, so, uh, so that's I mean, learning on Final Cut Seven for me is why going to Premiere was so much easier because that's yep. I mean, it's it's so much more similar. But then, yeah, I could see if you're going from iMovie to that how to, to Final Cut Ten, how much how that would be a, a smooth transition. Yeah, no, that makes way more sense. Yeah, I started on 
Final Cut Studio 3, which is whatever Final Cut, what is that, 5? Because mm-hmm. they had like an offset numbering. And then I used 7 for a long time. And then skipped 10 for a little while, tried Premiere, and then eventually just accepted my fate. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. I love Final Cut 10 especially from a content creator's perspective. Oh, no, yeah. I I think that for Final Cut 10, and people always ask me, I'll sometimes point people to Final Cut 10. Like, if what they're trying to create doesn't involve a high level of of in-depth editing, um, I was, yeah, go ahead. You don't need that much flexibility. uh, If if you don't plan to do some heavy, heavy uh, coloring and all that stuff, I always point them to Final Cut 10. That's always the easiest place to to, to learn and and to do stuff but they it, it does handle footage really really nicely well, caleb would you would you edit a feature film or documentary in final cut absolutely yeah oh, yeah uh for, wow. for sure really the only reason i would consider adobe is after effects right mm. which was a huge um, part of my maybe work audition for. but i mean there's without after effects i was gonna ask like would you still be into it if that didn't even exist um i just Ah, it's been so clunky and buggy. And the fact that, especially if you're going to be an Apple guy, uh, it kills me to see people using Adobe on Apple hardware. It's like, just sell it or keep it personal and buy a, buy a PC. What are you doing? <laughs> Cause you're using like essentially nerfed hardware for software that, uh, you know, works on it, but not phenomenally. Whereas final cut 10 on an older machine is a dream. Uh, even, you know, there's yeah. lots of guys on 2014, 2013 MacBooks who are killing it in Final Cut 10. And that's just because Apple can get in there and do Apple things. I wonder if I've never experienced how fast it is and how much, but like, or am I just so used to what Premiere is? Like, I have no problems. I drop it down if I need to in res mm-hmm. and like, I have no issues with anything. It it has been buggy that you are 100% right. And it actually has seemed to get better, but it, it's not great. It's still uh, in between right now. Right. But well, I guess um, I mean like the guys who like who have Apple hardware and just bought an iMac Pro for Premiere. Right. You know what I mean, like like I would keep Apple hardware. I get the whole, you know, ecosystem and yeah. you're used to it and everything. But for work, I mean, I would just build a or buy a pre-built like gaming machine. And just, I think this Ariel, I think know. this has come up on three straight episodes that we need <laughs> to get a PC and run, even if we're running Premiere, get a PC That's to do. Got to be some some kind of sign. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you if you if you want to use Final Cut X, use it. <laughs> <laughs> and it is also yeah. like, uh, do you want a video today, or do you want me to spend another three days fine tuning it? You know, you right. got to ship it. A good but friend of mine, and I feel like I started to figure this stuff out as I was transitioning out of being a freelancer. But I used to like. If I had the time, I'm going to spend mm-hmm. every second of it tweaking this ridiculous lighting setup for this, you know, commercial that we're doing or whatever. When, uh, you know, more these days and toward the end of doing freelance, it was like, what's going to sell the red widget that they're trying to sell? Mm-hmm. Is it going to be my lighting setup or is it going to be, you know, whatever else? So just like it's all, you know, and that's that's not going to fly on a, on a on the next James Bond film. But, you know what I mean? Just. <laughs> Whatever you're working at, what's the the end goal? Is it to get a video out and get a video out regularly? Is it to sell this 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 Illinois manufacturing company's widgets? Or uh, do you yeah. think that YouTube? I, that this is actually one of the reasons I wanted to get some YouTube stuff going is because yeah. I became such a perfectionist. It was like I'm never going to get anything done, and I was thought that yeah. if I try to pump out two videos a week, there's no way I could be perfect. So I, it taught me to like figure out what's important and what's not, you know? Yeah. Do you think, so the same thing you said towards your end of your freelance clear career where your YouTube stuff was really picking up. Do you think that taught you like, Oh man, I wish I would have known this a little bit back. So I would have got through some of my stuff quicker. Oh yeah. I mean this, the channel would probably be way bigger. <laughs> like I was amazed when you were like, I did it. This is the first week I haven't done a video in a week in a year. I was like, Holy cow. Cause when I got started, it was all over the place and it wasn't until the last handful of years that it's been really really regular um but yeah you gotta let that stuff go and it's so funny because people are constantly like you know uh can't take this guy seriously because he doesn't actually do it for a living anymore (laughs) i'm like 
people have said Look that. around man you make you know several hundred videos a year and get back to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> people have told you that. my favorite comment and it's sort of true and i just i cracked up because it's phenomenal he's like if you think about it caleb and his channel is like a cooking show where you talk about the knives you talk about different types of fruit you talk <laughs> about ovens temperatures but you never actually cook um <laughs> and i thought that was wonderful <laughs> you know it's sort of true like uh, I don't go out and, and make a short film or a yeah. documentary. Uh, but again, it comes down to, I mean, if but uh, okay, you're, to, to, you're going to do so. this, it's you got to let one die. And like, I'm so jealous of guys like Ryan who yeah. have family or anyone really who's interested enough to like get in at the ground floor. Right. Like it's impossible for me to find people who would want to do this for free. Right. Yeah. To get started, you know. Um, so that's that's I love what he's got going on. I think it's amazing. And that's a nice little tease for you. Again, if you want to check out the full hour and a half episode, you can go over to ifilmmakerpodcast.com. We also stream the podcast live on YouTube with a live chat so you can come join in, interact, and get involved in the conversation with us. So be sure to subscribe to the iFilmmaker YouTube channel as well and click that little bell so you can get alerts when we do go live and you can come join in. But as far as this episode on this channel, that'll do it for today. If you liked it, I'd appreciate if you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and click that little bell so you can get alerts to all future episodes. If you have any comments or questions, you can of course leave those below or contact me on any of my social medias, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, at Jersey Filmmaker. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to get out there, don't wait, go create, and I'll see you next time.